Captain Pitorku stands before the Prozenuthian High Council, recounting his disturbing encounter with the mysterious Human Alliance Super Battle Carrier. He was following orders patrolling Prozenuthian controlled space when their readings detected an unknown ship in neutral space. Suspecting it could have been a cluster of some remaining Ixiart cruisers trying to fool their sensors, he ordered his ship into neutral space, understanding it could have been a risky maneuver. Captain Pitorku described how the ship and its accompanying fleet were unlike anything he had seen before. It was massive, at least 30% larger than any known human alliance ship. Their scans revealed it was armed with all forms of plasma long-range cannons, missile launchers, and multiple rail guns, and had an armada of fighters docked inside of it that could match anything the pro military had currently available. As he describes the immense size and firepower of the enemy vessel, the counselors listen intently, their expressions turning grim with each detail revealed. Captain Pitorku explains how the ship's advanced weaponry and remarkable fleet posed a significant threat to pro controlled space, prompting concern among the council members about the potential implications of this new development. Captain Pitorku explained that at first the ship was unidentified, and before his hails were answered, the ship fired a plasma cannon toward an asteroid that was between both ships. He took that as an act of aggression and began to defend his ship. Despite his efforts to assess the situation and maintain control, Captain Pitorku admits to feeling a sense of unease and apprehension in the face of such overwhelming firepower. He recounts how his attempts to engage the enemy vessel were met with fierce resistance, forcing his ship to retreat in order to avoid complete annihilation. Captain Pitorku explained it was only after our hasty retreat were the hails answered, as the humans claim they were clearing asteroids that were on a trajectory to planets in their space. I quickly ordered my ship back into pro space once the mix-up was cleared up. As he concludes his report, Captain Pitorku implores the High Council to take swift and decisive action to address this newfound threat posed by the Human Alliance Super Battle Carrier, emphasizing the urgent need for a coordinated response to safeguard pro interests in the galaxy. The pro High Council deliberates intensely following Captain Pitorku's report, grappling with the gravity of the situation and the potential ramifications of the Human Alliance's unprecedented display of military might. Council members express concerns over the implications of engaging in open conflict with such a dreadful adversary, weighing the risks of provoking further aggression against the necessity of defending pro territory. As debates ensue, tensions rise among the councillors, reflecting the gravity of the decision that lies before them. In the midst of deliberations, Admiral Cronax, a seasoned military strategist, offers his assessment of the situation, advocating for a cautious approach to dealing with the human alliance threat. He emphasizes the importance of gathering more intelligence on the enemy's capabilities and intentions before committing to any course of action. While acknowledging the urgency of the situation, Admiral Cronax urges the Council to prioritize diplomacy and explore potential avenues for de-escalation in order to avoid sparking a full-scale conflict that could have catastrophic consequences for both sides. As his words resonate with the counselors, a sense of uncertainty hangs in the air, underscoring the precariousness of the situation and the frightening encounters that lie ahead. Despite the tensions and doubts surrounding the encounter with the Human Alliance, the pro zenuthian High Council ultimately decides to proceed with caution, opting to prioritize the suggested diplomacy and intelligence gathering route over immediate military action. Recognizing the need for a coordinated response, they authorize the deployment of diplomatic envoys to engage in dialogue with the Human Alliance, seeking to establish lines of communication and explore potential avenues for peaceful resolution. Meanwhile, efforts to gather intelligence on the mysterious supercarrier and its capabilities are intensified, with specialized reconnaissance teams dispatched to observe and monitor human alliance activity along the border of pro zenuthian controlled space and neutral space. 
as the pro-Zenuthian government navigates the delicate balance between mediation and preparedness for potential conflict, tensions simmer beneath the surface, casting a shadow of ambiguity over the future of interstellar relations. With the fate of pro-Zenuthian territory hanging in the balance, the outcome of these diplomatic efforts will shape the course of events in the months to come, as the pro-Zenuthians brace themselves for what lie ahead, they understood that the scales of intergalactic power were tipping away from their empire. As months passed, the pro-Zenuthian High Council found themselves inundated with intelligence reports detailing the rapid advancements within the Human Alliance. Utilizing the resources acquired from the Barnard Star System campaign, the humans had embarked on a comprehensive military buildup, expanding their arsenal and enhancing their fleet capabilities. These developments posed a frightening threat to the pro Zenuthian military establishment, prompting urgent discussions among council members about the need to adapt and respond effectively to the shifting balance of power in the galaxy. Amidst these deliberations, another layer of complexity emerged with the integration of advanced technological insights from Olam and Klopp engineers. Through collaborative efforts, these alien allies had contributed invaluable expertise to streamline ship manufacturing and development processes within the Human Alliance. The fusion of diverse technological perspectives offered new strategic advantages, further complicating the pro High Council's assessment of the evolving galactic landscape and necessitating careful recalibration of their diplomatic and military strategies. The pro High Council grappled with the implications of these developments, recognizing the need for a comprehensive reassessment of their own military capabilities and strategic objectives. In response, they convened a series of high-level briefings and consultations, drawing upon the expertise of military commanders, intelligence analysts, and diplomatic advisors to formulate a cohesive strategy. As discussions unfolded, it became increasingly apparent that the pro Zenuthians faced a pivotal moment in their history, to think of a former slave colony of their empire has risen to immense power was unheard of in the thousands of years of the pro Zenuthian Empire's history. Against the backdrop of heightened stresses and insecurity, the pro Zenuthian High Council also ordered the quota from all slave colonies to increase in order to match the Human Alliance expansion. As preparations intensified, tensions simmered within the highest echelons of pro Zenuthian society with competing factions vying for influence and advocating divergent approaches to address the escalating crisis. While some advocated for a proactive stance, advocating preemptive strikes, others urged caution, emphasizing the importance of diplomacy and even a possible strategic alliance with the Human Alliance. Caught between competing visions of the future, the pro Zenuthian High Council grappled with the weight of responsibility as they charted a course forward. As whispers of war echoed throughout the corridors of pro Zenuthian power, tensions reached a fever pitch within the High Council chambers. The decision to abandon diplomatic overtures in favor of militarization sent shockwaves through the Empire, polarizing opinion and sowing seeds of dissent among the ruling elite. While some saw it as a necessary measure to safeguard pro Zenuthian interests in the face of mounting aggression from the Human Alliance, Others voiced concerns over the hazardous implications of the Council's decision to train, arm, and promote some of their slave races in order to use them as cannon fodder in the battle to come. Beside this framework of hesitation and dispute, a new risky war plan unfolded with grim determination. pro military academies buzzed with activity as officers drilled their troops in combat tactics and strategies, while factories churned out weapons and warships at an unprecedented pace. As the specter of war loomed ever closer, the pro Zenuthian High Council grappled with the weight of their decisions, torn between the imperatives of survival and the quandaries of their actions. Forging alliances with erstwhile enemies and conscripting slave races into their ranks represented a calculated gamble, one that carried the potential for both glory and ruin. Yet, with the fate of the Empire hanging in the balance, they knew that hesitation was a luxury they could ill afford. Thus, with resolve tempered by uncertainty, 
they embarked on a path fraught with peril, bracing themselves for the inevitable clash that would determine the destiny of the Prozenuthian Empire. In the heart of it all, the reality was the Prozenuthian High Council was left with little choice. The notion of becoming an ally with the Human Alliance was thwarted aside swiftly as the humans made it clear they were organizing their enemies around them. The Human Alliance made it clear when they went to the rescue of the Ixiarts after the Prozenuthian Empire had sent the Morale Mercenary Army to bring the Ixiart free tribes under their heels. The Noans opted to stay out of any future conflict with the Human Alliance, but the Prozenuthian High Council knew the Noans would be left with little choice other than to join them as the Human Alliance would try to free all the enslaved Klops. The humans are on the warpath, and they have their sights on a second war with the Empire.